This is going to be over chapter 12, Intermolecular Forces. So to start off, um, uh, the, the basis of this is the three phases that everyone knows, which is solid, li solid, liquid, and gas. So we know all three of these phases, but what causes them to occur? What causes them to occur are intermolecular forces. So, what are those forces that keep them in place? Well, these two are called condensed phases. Um, and why is that? They're called condensed phases because uh, since the molecules and atoms are so close to each other, they can actually interact, and the forces between them become become significant. And because of that, they stick together more. The gas, though, it's the gas particles are so far away that the forces actually don't have any impact. Therefore, they don't really interact with each other. So, um, there's three types of main forces that cause um, that cause these three phases, and they're called van der Waal forces. Uh, yeah, van der Waal forces. So these forces. Um, consist of dispersion forces dispersion forces uh dipole dipole and finally and a type of dipole dipole which is hydrogen bonding so between these three um the main thing is that Dispersion forces are usually the weakest. Dipole dipole is um that d dispersion for oh, yeah, dispersion forces are usually usually the weakest, but we'll go more in depth later. But um dipole dipole is usually with polar molecules and hydrogen bonding is with the main hydrogen bonding is with three um atoms which is F O and N. Fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. All right, now go. Let's go more in depth. In depth. Okay. So for dispersion forces, um, dispersion forces. Okay. So for dispersion forces, um, the main thing is that um, the forces are relatively weak alone. Uh, what does that mean? So let's say we have um, oh, uh, and the just a main point is that dispersion forces happen with every molecule. So if a question asked, um, what what type of forces are in this? You know straight like right off the bat that there's going to be dispersion forces. They happen in between all atoms, happen in between all atoms and molecules, all atoms and molecules. Okay, so, um, so, and, so, for an example, um, dispersion forces, let's say we have O2, um, so a picture of O2, we have oxygen here, another oxygen, and they're sharing, they're sharing their electrons perfectly. So, um, what does this mean? Well, okay, so all the electrons are being shared equally. So it's going to be pretty spherical in shape. It's going to be pretty spherical. And um, so what does that do? Well, in nature, nothing's, uh, nothing's perfect in nature. So sometimes, e even though um, it should be uh, eight atoms uh, for each, because the, um, they're sharing it, uh, they're sh they're sharing it perfectly. Uh, sometimes uh, it can be nine atoms here, and it can be nine atoms here, and then uh, seven atoms here. Because nothing nothing in nature is perfect. So uh, so one one atom that should be here couldn't accidentally like be a little over here. So what does that do? Well, if you have normally it should have eight. Um, eight valence electrons to make it stable, but now you have an additional electron. What that causes is a negative charge um, on one side and a positive charge on the other, because um, it should it should be completely balanced, but it's not. Um, so 
that what this does is that since now it has a partial negative on one side and a partial positive, when it when it join when it sees another um uh when it sees another oxygen molecule, um, even if this oxygen molecule is perfectly okay on its own, this negative charge is gonna push an electron away into this side. Um, and if you push one electron away, it's going to make this side positive, and suddenly you know you know what happens now, like positive and negative attract. So there's going to be a s small bond here. Um, so this is called the disper like dispersion force. Like it's where nonpolar molecules exert a um, exert a force between each other um, right here. So. Um, uh, uh, and and not only uh, nonpolar, but all molecules. But um, if you have a nonpolar, it'll only be it'll only be dispersion forces. And keep in mind that these intermolecular forces, these intermolecular forces, are much weaker than um, intra. Meaning, if you have um, like this this bond right here, um, this bond right here is only one to two like oh i'm sorry this one this bond right here is only one to two percent of this bond this this is a covalent bond and this bond is um this bond bond is extremely um is much more powerful than uh this one this uh so like um interm intermolecular forces are only one to two percent of ionic or covalent bonds Ionic or covalent bonds. Okay, so um, they're only one to two percent. So that's dispersion forces. Uh, it's where it happens in all molecules, but if you have a nonpolar molecule, it will it will only have um, dispersion forces in it. So um, it'll only have dispersion forces. So uh, that's. Um, that's that's what'll happen. So okay, going on to the next one. So dipole dipole. Dipole dipole uh dipole dipole bonds, um they usually they usually have um dipole dipole bonds usually have uh are polar. They're between polar molecules. So you have polar molecules. Okay, so you have polar molecules. And um so what happens here? So this this is only a very very small charge because um, it's usually pretty pretty perfect um, in a uh, uh, perfect like sphere, but it, sometimes it can randomly have like additional electrons or fewer electrons, creating a really small charge. But polar molecules, the electrons being pulled farther. So if you have if you have um, if you have a electrode negative atom. If you have, um, let's say, like uh, um, uh, CF, right? Like, um, if you have CF, so uh, fluorine is a lot more electronegative than C. So it's, so it's um, electron, like it's, it wants electrons more. So it's gonna pull the carbons atoms much more to its side. So what it's going to do is it's going to create um, a much stronger plus charge over here and a much more negative because fluorines it wants these carbon atoms much more. So it's going to pull it pull it over to this side a lot more than, for example, uh, this one because these two are pretty uh, relatively stable. So they'll only have like one or two electrons, but this will have like let's say like two or two or three electrons more, like. Um, pulling on it so it'll be it'll be a lot stronger uh and because of that dipole dipole um uh dipole dipole bonds uh intermolecular for intermolecular bonds are going to be stronger than dispersion forces okay so and then the final a type of dipole dipole bond is called hydrogen bonds and hydrogen bonds are the strongest of these three and hydrogen hydrogen bonds um they occur between they mainly occur uh between um three three uh, atoms which are f o and n fluorine oxygen and nitrogen um it happens to a small amount in other um 
in elements such as like chlorine, but uh, people don't really like take into account. Like so, the these three are the main ones. These three exhibit um a lot. So you um and oh, it's obviously where um where hydrogen uh, bonds to one of these. And so if you have HF, what what makes hydrogen bonds so strong? If you have HF, a hydrogen bond between this, F is the most electronegative atom on the periodic table. So its its strength is in, uh, incredibly strong. And hydrogen only has one, one proton and one electron. So this electron right here is going to like almost like fly towards the fluorine. It's going to be so attracted to fluorine. So the entire electron sphere, almost the entire electron uh, electrons will be around fluorine, leaving this hydrogen with only one proton in the middle. And if you only have one proton with no, uh, if you only have one plus charge, right? Um, uh, if you only have one plus charge in the middle with without being surrounded by an electron, that's going to be an incredibly strong force. So it's going to be incredibly strong here and incredibly negative here. Um, and between that, if you have another one, if you have another one, it's going it's going is like this highly negative charge is going to be highly attracted to this highly um, positive charge. So those. Um, uh, these are the three main ones, and um, I'll cover I'll cover uh, uh, more like exceptions and examples in the next video.